meeting properly noticed? Yes, it was. Yes, it was. I would like to remind everybody to please use your microphones when speaking. Any uh, public participation will take as the agenda item is needed. Roll call. Let it show all members are present. The agenda. I'll make a motion to approve the agenda with one change, and that is removing item 16. Second. Motion made and seconded. Josh? Pardon? Okay. Um, in the uh, archives, the re video archives of the recording meetings, um, when we pull that up, it just displays the agenda. We do not actually see the video screen of the participants. And I'd like to see about changing that so we can actually see the participants because it's just this little tiny box. And I was talking to Rich about it before the meeting today. And he says that we need to change that um, from the, the way the screen's presented. So we have a dis full display screen of the video during these meetings so we can see the participation here. Yes, yes that's you'll have to talk to Rich about that. That has nothing to do with the agenda. Okay. Well, we'll do that in a minutes. That's what I'm okay. Hold that thought, everyone. Okay. So we have a motion by Rocky and seconded by Mike Baker to approve the agenda, excluding line item 16. So when we go to the closed sessions, we'll just go from one to the other. We won't have to reconvene in open session. Bill? Uh, point of order, Mr. Chair. Um, they're two separate things. And if you want to go down and discuss 17, we can. But I don't believe that that item should be on property committee. I think that's an item for the building committee. Because purchases are something that we don't own. No, this is property. Purchasing property. Exactly. We don't purchase property. We maintain property. We, we've we asked that before in this committee, and it was always said that it belongs in the building committee. The Purchasing. Bu the building committee is in charge of building, and if there's major remodeling, but not like that, where it would go more to the building committee. We are in charge of property. Any property that the county is going to buy or sell goes through this committee. That's not what you've told me in the past, Mr. Chair. I, you, we, we discussed the, uh, the school down there about looking into purchasing that, and you said, no, that's in the building committee. So it's not our, and then we had a meeting that said we would be in charge of maintaining okay. property. I think we need to get more clarification from, from uh, Corp Council on this. I'll just talk about it in the All right. and Josh? Mr. Chair, to elaborate on Bill's comment there. Um, yeah, regarding uh, the school, the Grand Mart School, I recommended uh, approximately a year ago that we purchase that from the school board for a dollar, and I was told that we do not handle purchases at that meeting. I think maybe it was nobody was interested in purchasing it. That's well, not how it was told. That's not how it was told. I do... I don't know if some of us suffer from memory loss, but I'm not among one of them. Okay. Aren't we kind of sidetracked here? No. I believe so, Mr. No. Chair. It's, well, that's why we're discussing it. Yes. That we wouldn't go into closed sessions that for both things if it does not belong in this committee. Right. If you think we should avoid line item 17, we'll talk about it in closed session. I don't think we need to discuss it. I don't think it belongs in this committee. Can you That's elaborate on that, uh, Madam Administrator? It's on the screen. I can't there are some gray areas between building and property and rec, but I don't think this is one of them. I agree there are some gray areas, but that's why this question keeps coming up. And I thought we settled that when we did the new um, amendments to the uh, Constitution. Mr. Chair? Yes. So my recollection, because we've had this discussion before, 
with building committee, if it's regarding the project plan, two, three, four, you know, the building project plan, and if there's a land purchase in that, that goes to building because it's part of a project plan. In this case, this is just an outright purchase or a sale, both things going on of property. It has nothing to do with our building project. That's my understanding. Uh, Mr. Chair, we also uh, had a closed session item that I'm not gonna discuss here because it was closed session, but it was also about this very same topic, which I won't discuss at this time because it was a closed session item. And we delineated between the two committees. And I was concerned about this for, I've been concerned about this for two years. That's why I'm making a point of it. And it seemed to yo-yo back and forth. And I'm not putting the blame on you, Mr. Chair, but why do we always get in this situation? We, it should be a cut and dried situation. Do you want to read number six to us? Mm -hmm. Can't read, see it. Okay, this committee, along with the county manager, administrator, coordinator, shall oversee all property owned by the county and shall recommend any action to acquire or dispose of county real estate and other county property, excluding county forest properties already acquired or or acquired disposal of in the future. So that item article right there, and that's of the rules. The rules committee says this committee is has jurisdiction over purchasing and or selling a piece of property. Okay. So well, now that should eliminate gray areas then. Am I correct? If something needs to be purchased, it would go to the property committee. As our administrative manager just said, when it comes to a project for a building, for example, let's just use a health and human services building. That would be a part of that gray area. That's where the building committee would come in. I hate to put you in the spot, Mr. Chair, but th there's a lot of smoke coming out on this one. We've been discussing this for two years and told that it was a building committee. All purchases were building committee, but as it says it up there, so I'll I'll defer to what it says up there. Okay, Thank so you. can we have a vote on the agenda? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? But it show that we have four eyes and Bill Wimmer and Mayo. Put Josh down as a male. So. Okay. Uh, approval of minutes from August 14th. Are there any additions or corrections to the minutes? Josh? Mr. Chair, just uh, basically what I was saying earlier, I think this would be under this. Uh, where we have the videos, the archives. Uh, so I was looking to change the way it's presented here when we view it. We go back and view these videos and we're only able to see a small little screen with the participants. So I'm, and what they're showing on the big screen is the agenda. I, I think I think it'd be much more productive uh, to be displaying the participants in the video when we have these meetings. It makes sense to me. So I just- Are, like are we talking about the live meetings? Uh, well, the recorded recorded video or archives. It's if you go back and watch these meetings. I've never went back and watched one. I, I, I actually do a lot, and uh, I encourage others to do that. But we we're only able to see the the agenda and not the actual participants. We got that little tiny box. I don't know if people see it right here on the bottom corner of the screen. It's really hard to see well, unless you blow it up. But I believe that's Rich. that's a subject you'd have to bring up with IT department. Well, I, I didn't go through the Rich. county manager. Yeah, I spoke to Rich about this before the meeting and he said to bring it up now. And then we'd have to just basically switch this. And he, I don't know if he's available to help me with this a little more, but um, switch the screens from the agenda. So we have a display of the participants in the video. Mr. Chair. 
I've yes, made a note of it. Okay, thank okay. you, Cynthia. Okay. Thank you, appreciate it, Mr. Chair. Okay, okay, any additions or corrections to the minutes? And the minutes will stand approved. Is there any correspondence? I have none. Project status report. Kyle, are you on? Mr. Chair, I'm right here. Um, the project status report should have been updated by the respective department heads. Um, are there any questions on this? Seeing none, we'll move on to maintenance report. Bill, have you got something for us? Um, other than the written report, I don't have any additions this month. Um, if there's any questions on the report, I'd be happy to answer them. Uh, any updates on the veterans wall? No, I have several left several messages with the project uh, manager for that project. Um, I've not gotten a call back whether he's having issues uh, communicating with the concrete contractor. I don't know. Um, I will keep leaving messages and keep trying to get a hold of him on that because I, I would like to see that completed prior to winter of this year. Thank you, Bill. You're welcome. Parks Department. Uh, anything on your reports? Uh, hopefully everybody had a chance to look through those. I guess the highlights are we completed Labor Day weekend and our busy, busiest time of the year. And we look forward to some of our fall and off season projects. Um, both parks were busy and we were operating kind of a little understaffed here at the end of the year. Those are kind of my highlights. Darren, do you have anything to add? Nothing else major, unless there's any questions of the committee on our report. Any questions? Then we'll move into line item A, discuss or act on bids for Monarch Bridge rehabilitation. As we've uh, spoke about previously in, in uh, other meetings about this uh, Snowville Trail AIDS grant for the replacement of the bridge uh, just off of Highway 21 in Arkdale, went through our processes, um, were awarded the grant last spring, did the bidding for uh, the two and a half, three weeks. Um, what I have included in the in the uh, report there today is the itemized bid form of the two bidders that we did receive. And it appears as though the uh, award should go to Anderson Bridge for $133,500. The original uh, grant is 166. That comes right out of the uh, snowmobile AIDS fund. So, I'm correct in saying that this project will be co covered completely by the grant. 100%. Okay. Josh? Mr. Chair, if I may, uh, Darren, can you tell us a little more about where these these bidders are out of? Or... The, I believe Anderson Bridges out of Colfax. They've been in, come, been in business for, for a good number of years. Um, they actually have two other bridges within the county that they that they uh, on the snowmobile program that they built um, over the years. And custom manufacturing is on the southern end of the state. They did one of our last bridges in the Delwood area, but uh, both are very reputable outfits. Okay, are there are there any options on any more of a localized bid at all? There's, There's no companies that that. Uh, that are more local that that do that. We advertise for the actually two weeks within the newspaper, and then I put out some feelers to the state. puts together a a list of what they feel is qualified bidders, and I sent an email correspondence to each of those also that we had this project in the works. Okay, all right. Thank you for that, Darren. Appreciate it. I make a motion to accept the low bid from Anderson. I have it. Motion made by Rocky, seconded by Mike. Any further discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Opposed by Josh. Moving along, discuss and act on community center fee and policy changes. Linda, is that why you're here? Mr. 
Mr. Chair, yes, but I think Cynthia was going to start the conversation. All right, thank you. Mr. Chair, so I'll preface that um, we we need to probably get in the habit of reviewing all of our fees on an annual basis, whether we make a change or not, and then taking those fees, if there are recommendations to change, uh, that would then move up to the committee. But um, so this has been a long time coming I don't know the, the year, how far back this goes, but there has not been a change in quite a while. And with that, I'll turn it over. Okay, Mr. Chair. Yes. Um, so in our discussions, um, I'll go back. When we first started the community center, it was decided that nonprofit 501c3 groups would not pay to use the rooms. Um, and discussing things, it was, we went through, do we leave it that way? Do we make it all nonprofits don't pay? Do we do as some people have done where the nonprofits pay less than other people or make it that everyone pays the same fee? And the decision came down that everyone would pay the same fee for using the rooms. Um, the other part of this was insurance requirements. We've never required anyone to have insurance when they were using a room at the community center. Um, and discussing this, there are other places that do require people to have insurance for their events so that in this case, the county wouldn't be liable. They would have insurance to cover anything that happened. And so the decision was made that we should require insurance from everybody, which includes nonprofits, et cetera, if you agree with that. And so it's basically up to discussion with you guys. Well, I will tell you that I read through it all and I was actually surprised to see the liability insurance clause in there. And then I thought about it because I take care of the town hall rentals for our town, as you know. And uh, I think we might go forward with something like that there. So I did like the idea. Any other discussion on it? Mr. Wimmer? Yeah, Mr. Chair. Um, well, there's an item in there under facility availability saying uh, rooms will be subject to availability dependent on the uh, Center for Disease Control and Prevention. CDC COVID-19, is that in there because we're still under the ARPA funds? Or why, why is that even in there? Well, I'll let Linda answer that. She put her hand up. <laughs> Mr. Chair, that came to be added when we were under COVID. And as most of you know, we still have COVID out there. If we were to have a major outbreak, we'd be covered just leaving this in there. So my, my question on that would be, how about the common cold? How about, cause that's still out there and so is the flu. Um, I don't think that should be in there. I think COVID-19 has become just like any other communicable disease. And we could have a list a mile long. And why we would just have COVID-19 on there, I don't know, because I think most people are above and beyond that by now. So I would like to see that eliminated. I'd make a motion. Okay, so the motion is made by Bill and seconded by Josh to amend the uh, report uh, taking out that COVID clause. I can't read it from here very well, but um, any other discussion on it? Mr. Baker? Can we hear, Mr. Chairman, can we hear from Kelly? Uh, do, do you have an opinion, Kelly, whether or not this should be part of the facility arrangements? Um, I, well, that would really be something our public health officer should weigh in on as that's within his purview and his scope. Um, 
I think having a clause of some sort that could allow you to limit the use of the rooms based on health reasons or outbreaks in the community may be a wise idea. Um, but I would want to defer to the health officer for his final decision. Yeah. Um, Cause it could also mean anything from smallpox to anything else. It is a communicable disease. Uh, you never know what could pop up. I too am not a believer in the COVID scare. I think it's a bunch of baloney. But um, Mr. Chair, I can get my button to work. Go ahead. I wonder if we couldn't just make that more generic and get the um, COVID out of there. Seems like the rest of it would be worded okay. It's just that we need to keep it kind of general and broad as it relates to any kind of if we're, if we're at a high level at the county for whatever reason, but but maybe just get the COVID-19 out of there. That's my, right? So would you like to change your motion to just take COVID out? And leave in centers for disease control and prevention? Because it could end up being anything like malaria or smallpox or anything else, which would be a community emergency. And okay, I I would I would go along with that. And your second on that, yeah. Okay. So we have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carries. Okay, now we've voted on the amendment. Now we have to vote on the policy change as printed, excluding COVID. Do I have a motion? Mr. Chair, do we need to go through the other uh, highlighted items or not? Um, certainly, the the highlighted items are what the changes are. Um, oh, if anybody has any discussion on any of them. So if I'm to understand this, uh, if we aren't required to have a certificate of insurance writer, is that correct? Currently we're not. That's okay. part of the change. So Just... you'd need a thousand dollars to rent the space. In other words, a thousand dollar. No, you need a million dollar insurance policy. Does that, doesn't that eliminate a lot of our community people? It seems to me uh, we should be attracting our community groups in there. And when you're talking about a million dollar policy, that might be difficult to come up with for some groups. I hate to limit uh, our community involvement. You know, I, th I thought about that same thing, but then I got to thinking, you know, if you open that center up for a senior group or something like that, and somebody goes out there and trips and falls down and decides to sue the county for a million dollars, be real nice if they had that insurance policy, wouldn't it? Well, right now, wouldn't the county have? Wouldn't the county have that policy? But it'd be a lot of litigation, and there would be uh, a big expense to the county that uh, that their insurance wouldn't cover. Mr. Chair. Yes, please. It is not unreasonable for a government entity that rents out space to require an insurance rider is really what that is. They don't have to get a separate policy. They just, they, they currently have insurance maybe on their home 
and they get a writer for a day, whoever's using the facility for that day. And I'm, I'm talking like if it's, it, if it's not a nonprofit group, an individual or a wedding or whatever, however that goes, all it is is a simple writer that they add to their insurance for a day, for the, the day of the event. It's not a separate policy altogether. And I wanted to put that out there just in case there's groups out there thinking that they have to actually get a separate policy. It's just a writer to their existing liability insurance. And I've had to do it. It's relatively inexpensive. I'll make a motion to approve the form with the changes. Motion by Rocky to approve it. Do I hear a second? A second by Mike Baker. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Opposed, Bill and Josh. Okay. Um, we have to go through. Oh, there we go. Set meeting, next meeting date. Why? This seems backwards, but we have to go through tax bid opening. Well, we have to go to the agenda the way it is. So, any items for the next agenda? We have to do the tax opening first. Oh, you're right. Yeah. Next meeting date would be October 9th. Is there anybody that has any items for that? Okay, depending on closed session, we may have something come up out of closed session. It'll be in there. So, Treasurer's report, Jenny. Hello. It is the fun time. Here we go. We have seven properties that we have had out um, for bid. It started out real slow, but the last couple of days has changed all that. Um, I think at last count, I had 125 envelopes here doesn't mean that there isn't more inside the envelopes. So Supervisor Gilner and Supervisor Baker are kind enough to offer <laughs> to open them. Um, and of course, this is the hard, long, boring part. So they'll open the envelopes because they are sealed bids. Um, and they'll tell us what property they are. We will put them in the correct file folder. And then when that's done, we'll go through each file folder with the name and the amounts bid, and we'll go from there. This is the long part. <laughs> I know they're not. Property number three. Okay. I can. I'll get paper clips here for that. Did they put the whole book in there? Pretty much. Does they have the top? Number one. They're supposed to be at the top, maybe. Nope, she did not. So that is number four. <laughs> Number four. Yeah. 
<laughs> I'm sorry, they're all dull at this point. Number two. One is golden. Golden is three. That would be a six. I'm, I'm assuming that's golden. So that's a golden answer. Yep. Up there. Pretty much sure. Yeah. Seven. Which one is that? Blue water. Blue water, Blue water is six. Don't breach one. Number four. That's good. Now yes. We'll go with this one. Wow. Mm -hmm. Number Number two. Edgewood is number four, too. That's weird. Um, 
Golden Golden Court. Three. The two and and the three. Okay. Two. <laughs> Six. That he's got more envelopes, so um, I guess that's number one. That one says number seven. We have, um, so we've got that. He's got more envelopes, maybe we could. Okay, this one was one. Number six on this one too. Number six. Okay. Eight three eight seven is number six. No. Okay. I am going to pull all of this off to the. Hold that. Number five goes here. Number six goes here for number seven. Number six is number one. So we're still holding on to check number seven. There's no bid. What happened? Wait, 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 okay, yeah. I'm saying, um, oh, <laughs> please, 
right, we got Hansen. That's this one. That's the number four. Oh, oh, that's okay. Scared me for a minute. Okay. Four. Blue waters is number six. Okay. Because they didn't put sealed goods on them, so we opened them, and then we found out they were sealed goods. I don't know what boot is. That must be a six, a blue water trail of six. Mm -hmm. Six. 
Love notes. Oh, they wrote the whole description. Okay. Oh, I didn't know that. Check it. It's on. Okay. Five. You want to put that one on for the side? Yeah. Oh, it's only one piece of paper. Okay. Filled out. That's for property number one. Okay. 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 This four. This is not applicable, but there's two checks. Oh, I'm sorry. Here. Number four. And the amount of what? Three. Three fifty one. Okay. Now that's number four. Nice to be there are other people who want to hear it. Two. Two. Then 
about me. Hindi lang sa PSN mo nga ito na 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 Oh, oh, that was taken good. Three copies of the same idea. Okay. Okay. Wow. Yeah, that looks like it. What is that say? Is that say a thousand bucks? Yeah, check for a hundred. 10%. Oh, I see. Okay. Oh, that, yeah. Gotcha. And the two. Number three. Number three. Number Number two, two envelopes. That's a number two. And number two. Number two, or something like that. Work that one. Oh, okay. you know what? Oh, it's in here yet. Is it number two? This come far, come far and wide, don't they? Mm -hmm.
going to go through this before we do it. Because then I would look silly and then I die. Shit, why not? Box yeah, you can throw it right now. So one, let's close this thing. This envelope, this envelope, and this big envelope. <laughs> We're just going to go through these piles really quick and make sure we've got the right numbers on the right pile before we get to go one on them. You want to check that? All right. Sure. Take a break. Great. All right. Yeah, so you guys deserve it.
Mr. Chair, are, are we uh, live right now? Um, we are still in session. Yeah. We I'm, I remember just sitting here. Maybe I could use this time to bring something up I'd like to address. Okay, go ahead. So uh, on the agenda. Well, um, I brought it up in the past. It's regarding the rebar on uh, the overpass on Highway 82. Um, nothing was done about that. And I've got some pictures. Well, uh, that that has nothing to do with this committee. That's a state highway. And right. State Did highway. anybody ever refer that to the state? Of, the pictures? I got a bunch of pictures. Okay. Yeah, it's, and I understand somebody was injured by it recently too. So um, I just like to see something happen or done with it. That's very hazardous. It's all underneath that overpass. So thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay, we're ready to roll with the property tax bids. He's going to do folder number one. Okay, is everybody ready? Mike, you're going to do folder number one? Yes, sir. Okay. Property one, I'm sorry, not folder one. This is from Mark Drodz, D R O Z D Z. Um, the, bid, the property amount was 15280 and he has a check for $1,528. Quick question, Mr. Yes. Chair. Uh, is it necessary to, to read the name off right now? Can we just read the amount? Really? Okay. It seems like we just read the amounts, and then when we did the winning bid, we had, we announced the name. Create a spreadsheet after the fact so you have the whole thing, but yeah, that's me. Okay. I was just trying to facilitate things. Thank you. From James Cron, K R A. HN, the bid was $2,313, and the check amount is $231.30. Next one is from Paul Cerna Morges. The Bid amount was forty five hundred dollars, and he has a check for four hundred and fifty dollars. Okay. 
Yep. Sorry. At least she's not making any noise. The next one is from... First name is spelled W-O-J-C-I-E-C-H. Scubbick. The... It is the last name is spelled S K U B I K. The bid amount is five thousand and one dollars, and he has a check for five hundred dollars and ten cents. Okay. Last name Severson S C V E R S O N Junior. The Bid amount is ten thousand dollars, and there's a check for a thousand dollars. Last name of Buck, B U C K, senior. Bid amount is sixty two hundred dollars, and he has a check for six hundred and twenty dollars. Last name is Stahl, S-T-A-H-L, a bid amount of $15,250 and a check for $1,525. Last name of Hassemer, H-A-S-S-E-M-E-R, a bid amount of $6,327 and a check for $632.70. Last name is Asanin, A S A N I N, a bid amount of $11,888 and a check for $1,188.80. Last name of Block, B L O C H, bid amount of $12,121.21 and a check for $1,212.12. That's completes property number one. In the past, we've done them all individually, haven't we? So I would entertain a motion for the high bid. Motion for the high bid. Fifteen thousand. I'll second that. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Abstain. Go ahead, Rocky. Property number two. First one is Alyssa Seconds, bid for $23,000 and a check for $2,300. One is LLC and or a sign bid for five hundred eighty five dollars and a check for fifty eight fifty. Next one is. Jason and Tracy Benedict, a bid for $526.66 and a check for $52.67. Next 
next one is Robert Tischer, a bid of $10,000 and a check for $1,000. Next one is Patricia Brattamore, bid of $3,113 and a check for $311.30. Next one is Robert Randy, R-A-C-Z-Y, bid for $10,101 and a check for $1,010.01. Next one is Cecilia Massey, L-A-S-S-E, a bid of bid of sixty-six thousand dollars, seven hundred fifty-six thousand seven hundred and fifty-six dollars, and a check for six thousand six hundred and seventy-five dollars and fifty-six cents. One is James and Janice Clifton, C L I F T O N, a bid of fifty thousand one hundred dollars and a check for five thousand ten dollars. Next one is a bid of fifty two thousand dollars two hundred fifty two thousand two hundred seventy seven dollars and a check for five thousand two hundred twenty seven dollars and seventy cents. Tara Norland. One is Eric Lassie, L-A-S-S-E, bid of $76,256, a check for $7,625.60. Jessica Harchi, H-A-R-T-J-E, bid of $529 and a check for $52.90. Brad Hintz, H-I-N-Z-E, bid of $2,000 and a check for $200. Joseph Benish, B-E-N-I-S-H, a bid of $8,000 and a check for Lawrence Pfaff, P-F-A-F-F, bid of $3,500 and a check for $250. Next one is Pavel Myers. Bid of seventeen thousand one hundred dollars and a check for seventeen hundred and ten. Put that again here in the sticker that you can see. Beta Bright C R Y K bid of twenty three thousand two hundred and a check for Bid from uh, something Skubik, S K U B I K, bid of sixteen thousand three hundred, check for sixteen hundred and thirty. David Tamala, T O M A L A. Bid of $3,400 and a check for $340. John Buck, 
bid of a thousand dollars and a check for a hundred. Kelly Strady, S T R O E D E, bid of thirty six thousand five hundred and a check for thirty six fifty. Sharon Gutowski, G-U-T-O-W-S-K-I, bid of $5,722 and a check for $572. Bid from Teresa Klinger, K-L-I-N-G-E-R, bid of $2,200 and a check for $220. Bid from Fireside Time LLC, seventeen thousand dollars and a check for seventeen hundred. Patrick Beeb, B E I B, a bid of four hundred one dollars and a check for forty dollars and ten cents. Next bid from Heidi Gammon. D-A-M-M-O-N for $17,777.77 for $1,777. Bid from Marcin Kimik, K-M-I-E-C, bid of $2,345.67. And a check for two hundred and fifty. James Archimedes, A R C H I M E D E, bid for eight thousand five hundred sixty five dollars and a check for eight hundred and fifty six fifty. Another one there. Another one from Cody Sanders. A N D E R S bid for a thousand dollars, check for a hundred. Manuel Cesares, C A S A R E S of seventy one hundred dollars, check for seven hundred and ten. Bid from Asanin, A S A N I N. For eighteen thousand eight hundred and eighty eight dollars and a check for eighteen hundred and eighty eight dollars and eighty cents. Bid from James Hillcoat, H I L L C O A T, of twenty six hundred dollars, twenty six, two thousand six hundred and five dollars and a check for two hundred and sixty and fifty cents. Bid from Todd Salinger, S A L L I N G E R, bid of $26,101 and a check for $2,610.10. Bid from Jeffrey Schramm, S C H R A M. Bid of $4,321 and a check for $432.10. A bid from Maggie Ogorzelski, C O G O R Z E L S K I. A bid of $15,850 and a check for $1,585. Bid from Philip. Philip Brahm, B R A H M, of $2,500, and a check for $250. Now it's on the What? Three more coming. No. no. Now you tell me. Bid from Anthony Moselle, M O. S E L of fifteen thousand dollars and a check for fifteen hundred.
Chad Greenwald, a uh, check or a bid of seventeen thousand five hundred, and a check for seventeen fifty. Brian Ludke, L U E D T K E, bid of twenty two thousand and one dollars and a check for $2,200.10. That's all. And this one? No, this is the one you got. Okay. That's the, uh, the high one. Mm -hmm. High bid is $76,256. I would move to accept the high bid of $76,256. Seconded by Mike. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. Property number three. Last name of Raxy, R-A-C-Z-Y. Bid amount of fifty thousand five hundred one. Check amount five thousand fifty dollars and ten cents. Last name is Bradamore. B R A D A M O R E. Bid amount of thirty one thousand one hundred thirteen dollars. Check amount for three thousand one hundred eleven dollars and thirty cents. Last name of Jeraminski, I believe it's J E R O M I N S K I. Bid amount of eighty nine hundred and a check for eight hundred and ninety dollars. Okay. The next one is from Kim Voltel, V O L T L. Bid $52,501 and a check for $5,250.10. The last name is spelled C-E-R-N-O-M-O-R-D-I-J-S. Bid amount of $71,600, check for $7,160. The last name of Sussex, S-U-S-S-E-K, bid amount of $40,000 and a check for $4,000. Last name of Hartley, Hartje, H-A-R-T-J-E, bid amount of $20,420, check for $2,042. Last name of Bungert, B-U-N-G-E-R-T, Bid amount of $15,077 and a check for $1,600. Last name of Lassie, L-A-S-S-E. Bid amount of $126,576 and a check for $12,052.60. Last name is Norland, N-O-R-L-A-N-D. Bid amount of $86,688 and a check for $8,668.80. Last name of Lassie, L-A-S-S-E. First name is Cecilia, to differ from the other fella. A bid amount of $106,257 and a check for $10,625.70. This one is from Fireside Time LLC. A bid amount of $51,025 and a check for $5,102.50. Last name of Lampe, L-A-M-P-E. Bid amount of $55,784 and a check for $5,578.40. Last name of Koluk, K-O-L-U-C-H. Bid amount of $51,691 and a check $5,169.01. Strode, S-T-R-O-E-D-E. 
a bid amount of $12,000 and a check for $1,200. The last name again of Skubik, S-K-U-B-I-K, bid amount of $50,013 and a check for $5,001.30. The last name of Ness, N-E-S-S, -S, a bid amount of $60,000 and a check for $6,000. Last name of Nordberg, N-O-R-D-B-E-R-G, bid amount of $65,000 and a check for $6,500. Tweek, T-W-E-E-K-L-L-C, bid amount of $27,820 and a check for $2,782. The last name looks like C-H-L-O-P-E-K. Bid amount of $57,891.23 and a check for $6,000. Last name is Pika, P-I-C-H-A. Bid amount of $25,000 and a check for $2,500. The last name again is A-S-A-N-I-N, -N, bid amount $45,888.88, and a check for $4,588.89. Last name of SRAM, S-C-H-R-A-M, bid amount of $35,070, and a check for $3,507. Last name of Salinger, S-A-L-L-I-N-G-E-R, a bid amount of $35,101 and a check for $3,510.10. Last name of Stahl, S-T-A-H-L, bid amount of $67,500 and a check for $6,750. The last name of Jackson, J-A-C-K-S-O-N, a bid for $76,543.21, check amount $7,700, and that completes number three. This one's got to go through. Oh, the high bid on this one is $126,576, and he does have the correct amount on his check. I move to accept the high bid. The motion by Rocky, I'll second it. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Okay, property number four. Ready, Jerry? Minimum, minimum bid for this thirty two hundred ninety dollars. Uh, last name Grisham, B R I S H A M, bid of six thousand dollars, and a check for five hundred dollars. That didn't work. Oh, there's another, another one. Another check. Yeah, six hundred dollars. Six hundred dollars total, two checks. Next one, last game of the name of last name of Stoudy, S T A U D E, bid of seven thousand six hundred and twenty three dollars, and a check for seven hundred and sixty two dollars and thirty cents. Sam Jerome A-E-R-O-M-N-S-K-I, bid of $3,810 and a check for $380.10. Next one, last name of Bradamore, bid of $13,113 and a check for $1,311.30.
Can you not hear me all the way over there? Tara Norland, N O R L A N D, bid of $17,553 and a check for $17,553. Bid from James Graff and James Clifton, C-L-I-F-T-O-N, bid of $13,200 and a bid of $1,320. Check for me. Bid from Cecilia Lassie, L-A-S-S-E, of $22,222 and a check for $222.22. Eric Lassie, L-A-S-S-E, bid of $22,000, $22,556, and a check for $2,255.60. Hmm? <laughs> uh, Tweet, LLC, bid of $4,176, and a check for $417.60. Last name of Bino, B E N O, check for or a bid of $36,011 and a check for $3,601.10. Dominic Suaj, S U W A J, bid of $26,599 and a check for $2,660. Uh, Geraldine Buck, bid of $7,777.77 and a check for $800. Pavel Mayer, M-A-Y-E-R, bid of $12,100 and a check for $1,210. Mark Hansen, a bid of $5,560 and a check for $556. Robert and Mark Verity, V-E-R-I-T-Y, a bid of $26,100 and a check for $2,610. Last name of Burke, B-R-Y-K, a bid of $22,550 and a check for $22,550. Last name of Skubik, S-K-U-B-I-K, a bid of $20,600 and a check for $2,060. The check is for four hundred dollars, so we're assuming the bid is four thousand. Last name of Renner, R E N N E R. John Buck. $7,000 and check for $700. Jessica Kaluch, K-O-L-U-C-H, bid of $9,870 and a check for $987. Heidi Gammon, 
G-A-M-M-O-N, bid of $12,222.22, and a check for $1,222.22. Janet Ness, bid of $16,500, a check for $1,650. Geraldine Buck, Bid of $5,077 and a check for $800. Marion Klopek, C-H-L-O-P-E-K. A bid of $8,123.45 and a check for $1,000. Last name Moselle, M O S E L, bid of $3,300 and a check for $330. Jeffrey Schramm, S C H R A M, bid of $3,750 and a check for $375. Last name Caravella, C A R A V E L L A, a bid of eighteen thousand dollars and a check for eighteen hundred. Last name Asanin, A S A N I N, a bid of twenty five thousand dollars, twenty five thousand eight hundred eighty eight dollars, and a check for two thousand five hundred eighty eight dollars and eighty cents. Archimede, A-R-C-H-I-M-E-D-E, -E, bid of $3,510 and a check for $351. Melissa Sessions, S-E-S-S-I-O-N-S, -S -S, bid of $21,000 and a check for $2,100. That's it. The high bid on this one is uh, $36,011. I would move to approve the high bid of $36,011. Seconded by Mike. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstain. Okay. Property number five. Number five. Last name Greenwald, G R E E N W A L D. Bid $4,250. Check for $425. Last name Brost, B R O S T. Bid $3,150. Check for $315. The last name is Tweak, LLC, bid amount of $2,077, check for $208. The last name is that long one, C-E-R-N-O-M-O-R-D-I-J-S, bid amount $2,500, check for $250. Last name is Skubik, S-K-U-B-I-K. Bid amount of $7,800, check for $780. Last name, Trenier, T-R-O-N-N-I-E-R. -N -N -E bid amount $1,751, check for $175.10. Last name, Casio, C-A-S-C-I-O. Bid amount $2,600, check for $260. Last name Buck, B-U-C-K, bid amount $2,100, check for 
check for $210. Last name of Gutowski, G-U-T-O-W-S-K-I. Good amount, $2,224, and a check for $223. Last name of Grohowski, G-R-O-C-H-O-W-S-K-I. Good amount, $3,950, check for $395. This is from the 18th Green LLC. Bid amount of $5,220 and a check for $522. The last name of Asanin, A-S-A-N-I-N. Bid amount $4,888 and a check for $488.80. Last name of Mosell, M-O-S-E-L, bid amount of $3,200 and a check for $320. Okay. Last name of Goodman, bid amount of $2,111 and a check for $211.10. Last one is Fireside Time, LLC. Bid $4,009 and a check for $400.90. The winner is the Skubik, S-K-U-B-I-K, with a bid amount of $7,800. All motion to accept the high bid. I'll second it. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Okay. Property number six. Four aye, one abstain. Uh, Rocky made the motion. I second. Ready? Property number six. Fireside Time LLC, bid of $4,011 and a check for $401.10. Jeff Smith, bid of $3,220 and a check for $322. Greenwald, Bid of $6,150 and a check for $615. Moselle, M-O-S-E-L, bid of $3,200, check for $320. Not sure. Tronier, T-R-O-N-N-I-E-R, -N -N -E bid of $2,501 and a check for $250.10. Sanin, A-S-A-N-I-N, bid of $3,888, check for $388.80. Gutowski, G-U-T-O-W-S-K-I, bid of $2,224 and a check for $223. John Buck, bid of $2,100, a check for $210. Rosek. R-O-Z-E-K, bid of $5,001.99 and a check for $510. Fitzgerald, bid of $4,500, a check for $450. Bid of $6,900 and a check for $690. Mm -hmm. 
Pavel Meyer. Bid of $2,500 and check for $250. Week LLC, bid of $1,977 and a check for $1,977. Dr Jerominski, J E R O M I N S K I, bid of $600 and a check for $60. Yeah, what's that? That's for the right one. Yeah, that doesn't make the minimum score. Yeah, that's the. But it's that wrong number on the bottom. You can go into the middle. That's the envelope for it. Okay. That the hell? Oh, we all done? No. That's it. And the high bid is uh, six thousand nine hundred dollars. I would move to approve the high bid of $6,900. I'll second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. Property number seven. The last name again is Asanin, A S A N I N. Bid $10,888. Check for $1,088.80. Last name of Stahl, S T A H L. Bid amount $6,520 and a check for $652. Last name of Mosell, M-O-S-E-L, bid amount $5,200, check for $520. Last name is C-H-L-O-P-E-K, bid amount of $12,345.67, a check for $1,500. Fireside Time, LLC. Bid $27,251, check $2,725.10. The last name is Miklashevsky, M-I-C-H-A-L-C-Z-E-W-S-K-I. Bid amount $28,280, a check for $2,828. Last name of Lampe, L-A-M-P-E, bid amount of $6,978 and a check for $697.80. Last name of Walner, W-A-L-L-N-E-R, bid amount $35,555.55, check amount $3,555.55. Here's the envelope. Last name of Buck, B-U-C-K. Bid amount $3,500. Check amount $350. $350. Last name of Rutowski, R U T K O W S K I. Bid amount $19,428.88. Check amount $1,942.88. Last name of Benish, B E N I S H. Bid amount $6,000. Check $600. Last name of Lassie, L-A-S-S-E. Bid amount $21,256. Check amount for $2,125.60, it looks like. Or it could be all zeros. Last name of Norland, N-O-R-L-A-N-D. Bid amount $31,158. A check for $311.58. Doesn't sound right. No. Okay. Last name of Lassie, L-A-S-S-E. Bid amount $26,128. And a check for $261.53. 
Last name is Bradamore, B-R-A-D-A-M-O-R-E. Bid amount $11,913. Check $1,191.30. Week LLC. Bid amount $2,177. A check for $218. Last name of Vodal. It's... I think it's Volte, V-O-L-T-E. That's what signed the check. For, or bid amount of $7,551 and a check for $751.10. Trentadu, T-R-E-N-T-A-D-U-E. Bid amount $88,600. I'm sorry, $8,016.99. Check them out, $801.70. The high bid is $35,555.55 for Brandon Walner. I move to accept the high bid of $35,555.55. I'll second it. Mike seconds it. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Okay, that takes care of that. The little note that Jenny gave me. <laughs> I move to allow the county treasurer's office to offer to the next highest bid recorded should there be a withdrawal or non-payment made. I'll second. Motion made and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Now. I guess I consider this meeting adjourned and we will move into closed session. So everybody that does not have to be here for the closed session, please leave. Can I leave? <laughs> no. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I think you may have to read that and then take a roll call vote. To go into closed session. Yes. Please. Don't drop that, Jenny. I am not Okay, I will entertain a motion. For the committee to convene in closed session for Wisconsin statutes section 19.85-1-E, deliberating or negotiating the purchasing of public properties, the investing of public funds, or conducting other specified public business, whenever competitive or bargaining reasons require a closed session, to discuss the potential sale of the property located at 1163 County Highway E, Easton, Wisconsin, parcel ID number 010-1328-0000. I'll second the motion. Motion made and seconded. All in favor say aye. I think you have to do a roll call. Oh, roll call vote. Josh? Bill? Aye. Mike? Aye. Rocky? Aye. And... Chairman is I. We are in closed session. Okay. 
because they were just closing it out, ending it. No, no we're going to keep going and talking in the meeting. Yeah, you just can't shut down. Because we have to get back in. After?